Hi, and welcome to lesson 11.1, which is about populations and samples. And here's our standard. But overall, we're supposed to learn how can you use a sample to gain information about a population. So we already have some new vocabulary here that's going to be discussed in this first paragraph. Random and non-random sampling. So when information is being gathered about a group, the entire group of objects, individuals or events, that's called a population. Because gathering information about each member or large group can be difficult or impossible, researchers often study part of the population. That's called a sample. So the size of a sample and the way the sample is chosen can have an effect on whether the sample is representative of the population or not. So yeah, how you pick that is very important. A vegetable garden, in our situation here, a vegetable garden has 36 tomato plants arranged in a six by six array. And here's our six by six, six by six array right here. And the gardener wants to know the average number of tomatoes on the plants. Each white cell, so each of these white boxes here in the table represent a plant. The number of cells tells how many tomatoes are, uh, the number in the cells tells how many tomatoes are on that particular plant. So on this particular plant, there are eight, and there are 13 in this one, and so on. Because counting the number of tomatoes on all the plants just takes too long, the gardener decides to choose plants at, a random, at random to find the average number of tomatoes on them. And to simulate the random selection, roll two number cubes 10 times. Find the cell in the table identified by the first and second, number cubes record the number so what I did is I already did this I rolled two number cubes and uh, in one roll I got uh, a six and a one and so that was right there and in another one I got a what I got a, a six and a four another one I got a five and a three which is 27 and four and six and so on so there should be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I rolled ten right there and uh, so now I can I can answer this these questions. What is the average number of tomatoes on the ten plants that were randomly selected? Well, when I uh, when I averaged all these, I added all these numbers and divide by ten. I got twenty. Uh, oops. So when I added all these numbers and divided by ten, I got twenty seven point eight. Then uh, alternatively, so as another choice, the gardener decides to choose plants from the first row. That's this row right here. Uh, what is the average number of tomatoes on these plants? Well, when you add up 8 plus 9 plus 13 plus 18 plus 4 plus 15 and you divide it by 6, you divide those all the, that sum by 6, you get 14.5. So there you go. And in class, we're going to talk about how do the averages you got it with each sampling com uh, compare, uh, each method. How do they compare? Okay, so to reflect. How do the averages you got from each sampling compare to the average of the entire population? And they're telling you that when you average everything, when you average all of these numbers, what you add them all and divide by 36, then you get an average of 28.5. So if you actually took the time. So how do the average compare? Well, the random sample is closer to the actual average. The first row average is much lower. So when you compare this to the average I got of 27.8, that's pretty close. But compared to the just the first row is 14.5. That's quite a bit off. So we're going to explore why might the first method give you a closer uh, average than, than the second method? Well, the plants in the first row seem to have fewer tomatoes than the plants in the other rows. And let's look at that. So plants in the first row seem to have fewer. So 8 compared to 24, 9 compared to 42, 9 to 41, or even 24 compared to 42 compared to 27 and so on. So yeah, all of these seem to have fewer than uh, plants in the other rows. So it's this is not a representative of the entire, uh, of the whole pot. So of, of the uh, population, it's not. That first row is no bueno. Okay, random samples and bias samples. A sample in which every person, object, or event has an equal chance of being selected is called a random sample. 
A random sample is more likely to be representative of the entire population than other types of samples. When a sample does not accurately represent the population, it's called a bias sample. And we're going to see a couple of examples of that. So we identify the population. We determine whether each sample is a random or biased sample and explain why. Okay, so in this situation, Roberto wants to know the favorite sport of adults in his hometown. He surveys 50 adults at a baseball game. Okay, so what's their favorite sport? And he goes to a baseball game. Hmm, the population is adults, uh, is adults in Roberto's town. So that's the population, because it says identify the population, so they did. And then, is it random or not? The sample is biased. And to explain why, well, people who don't like baseball will not be represented in that sample, because he went to a baseball game. Hello? All right, next. In the next situation, Paula wants to know the favorite type of music for students in her class. She puts the names of all the students in a hat, draws eight names, and surveys those students. So the population is the students in Paula's class, and that is random. That's a random sample. And the reason is, well, each student has an equal chance of being selected, and that's the difference. Uh, equal chance, not equal chance in a bias. So let's reflect on this. How might you choose a random sample? How might you choose a sample of size 20 to determine the preferred practice day of all the players in a soccer league? Well, there's many ways you can go with this. But what I have is you could just simply paste the names of all the players in a hat and draw 20 names. So that's one way. Everyone has an equal chance of being selected. Next, so 336. And for the your turn question, 337. We have for a survey, and by the way, try to answer this before I do. Hit pause. Okay. For a survey, a company manager assigned a number to each of the company's 500 employees and put numbers in a bag. Okay, that sounds like a random sample right there. The manager chooses 20 numbers and surveyed the employees with those numbers. Did the manager choose a random sample? I'd say yeah, every employee had an equal chance of being selected. Simple. Now let's talk about bias in surveys. So you can have a bias sample, but you can also have bias questions. So once you have selected the representative sample of the population, be sure that the data is gathered without bias. Make sure that the survey questions themselves do not sway people to respond in a certain way. In our example, second example, in Madison County, residents were surveyed about a new skateboard park. Determine whether each survey question may be biased, and then explain. Would you like to waste the taxpayer's money to build frivolous uh, a frivolous skateboard park? Well, that question is biased, and it discourages residents from saying yeah. They're going to sound pretty silly if they say yes to a new skateboard park by implying that it's a waste of money. The second situation, do you favor a new skateboard park? So it looks like it's another way of asking the same question. This question is not bias. It does not include an opinion on the skateboard park. It's just simple. Studies have shown, the next one, studies have shown that having a safe place to go, uh, having a safe place to go keeps kids out of trouble. Would you like to invest taxpayer, taxpayers money to, money to build a skateboard park? Uh, yeah, this one's biased. It leads people to say yes, because it mentions that having a safe place for kids to go and stay out of trouble. So there you go. And your turn on this. Determine whether each question is biased, and then explain why. When it comes to pets, do you prefer cats? The question is biased, since cats are suggested. And what is your favorite season? This question is not biased. It does not lead people to pick a particular season. And there you have it. That's what you got to know, because we get right into the guided practice after that. But that's what you got to know about population, bias, and samples. Thanks for watching.